<laughs> Shall we meet the cook? Oh, I, am I talking over you? No, 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 we're going to do a meet the cook. Oh, okay. Sure. Major Talmadge, would you like to introduce us? Yes. Diane Schwint, best 18th century cook on Long Island, <laughs> bar none. I'd like you to meet Mrs. Q, who's visiting Mrs. us Q. by coach all the way from the city of New York. First time in Setauket, right? It is my first time. I am so honored. It, I am as well, uh, madam. I have been looking forward to meeting you for the longest time. Oh, that's so wonderful. That's so kind. Thank you. I'm the historic cook at the Catchem Inn that's located in Santa Mauritius. And today I chose a recipe from Mary uh, Floyd Talmadge's cookbook. What is it? It's original recipe that um, is a boiled pudding, and I'm going to take it off the. Uh, I have a brazier going right now, and I'm going to take it off, and I'm going to serve it to you. I mean, I, you may not know that I am a merchant lady, and I have no culinary talents whatsoever. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say, Mr. Q would probably agree with that, and my own mother um, constantly tells me what a failure I am as a lady of the house, and I do have to order all of my food or have when someone, co someone come in and cook for me, as that is not one of my talents or things I have ever mastered, so I am fascinated to hear about what you have here. Well, I have to tell you, this would, would be a dish that I would serve at your house. This would be a winter dish, um, and it would be served as a bread put like not a bread pudding but a plum pudding so figgy pudding and plum pudding where you see these references in historic um, songs and stories that's what I'm going to be making what is in the what is in the bundle that's on the flame so the bundle a hundred years earlier would have been the stomach of an animal or intestines and it would have been more of a sausage like haggis it would have been a boiled meat and as time went on as meat probably became less available they probably added grains to it and that's where you see the transition come so what I did is I have um, its flour its breadcrumbs because you wouldn't waste any bread you would grate it into it and I have currants so that's pretty much it makes. And how long does it boil on the fire? Hours. Hours. Historic cooking back then, hours were um, taken to make food. Most dishes were a one-pot meal. And this particular um, kind of pudding might have been the only meal that they would have had for the day. Right, some, some light, right, something light. to for breakfast and right. then this would have stayed on the table as we people ate throughout the day? Throughout the day it would have really been filled your belly with it as a good hearty meal. Um, meat would have been served with it if they had it, but if not this would have been pretty much it. And I'm guessing during the time of the British occupation here there would have been little meat available as any that was available would have been used for the soldiers and Absolutely. the army first Absolutely. and all of the residents would have been secondary right. in My their dragoons needs. are fighting the cowboys who are stealing cattle now for the British Army in New York City up in the wilds of Westchester County. Right now, my, today as we speak, my dragoons are fighting those cowboys. Well, I have heard from my friend Captain Hamilton that they have not only taken the 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 um, steer for meat, but they've also taken the milk cows. Absolutely. And that as a result, there is no milk for chowder. And that the chowder is simply awful without the milk. Well, that's how Manhattan clam chowder started because they ran They're, out of been, milk. They've been adding the tomatoes. They've been I've adding heard. tomatoes. Yes. Oh. And on top of it, a lot of these recipes will have new milk. And what is new milk? New milk is fresh from the cow. So without the cow, you have no new milk. Is it true the British are taking all sorts of animals and 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 everything, claiming it to be the property of the king and their own and taking everything from Absolutely here and true. across in Connecticut as well? Absolutely. So dishes like this that could be extended with, um, you know, weed and flour, they would take the smallest amount of whatever they had and extend it. And since you are so close to the sound, would you be adding seafood and fish and Absolutely. things like that? It probably was a side dish. It wouldn't have been in. I've never seen a recipe with it in the pudding itself, but definitely it would have been used. Well, I would love to come back well, sometime for an actual meal with you. I know that my fans of Mrs. Q Live would love to have Mrs. Q come and have a meal with you. You're going to be at the tavern at the catcher. Yes. Meeting, but right now, I'd like to take this off and cut it open. Well, let's watch. Mr. Q, do we have any questions about the food? Actually, I'd like to eat some right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mr. Q says he would like to try try the food. I hope you're all enjoying this. If you have any questions about the food or any questions to any of the other interpreters you're seeing today, please be sure to enter them in the chat and we will pass those on. We are having a great time and we hope you are as well. <laughs> Young sir, are you going to try it? <laughs> Let's see, go ahead. We came here from Blackback, the other side of the town. We drove yeah. here. Oh. Where Caleb Brewster went. Yes, yes. So we all came here together. I finally visited his gravesite two years ago. Finally oh. went up there, yes. Oh, it's Fairfield. Yeah. Oh, yeah. we're right there. We're Blackback. All of us came, drove here. Right. right. We're studying it on no. the other side, or Caleb yeah, Brewster's side. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I've been to yeah, the we'll store. Yeah, we're, so we're going there. to the Brewster house a little bit Yay. later. Feel free to go in and take pictures because that's my yeah. camera is over there. So you can get right in front of me. Oh my goodness. It is a pudding. We are, we are friends, but well, we will we're friends, if you would like us to. Thank you. Hello, sweetie. <laughs> Oh, no, God. Okay, you ready? So we're going to cut a piece. Thank you. Well, let's come over and see. Mr. Mr. Q is positioning the camera so you'll have the best view possible as we cut open the pudding. Mm. I'm looking forward to visiting you and to talk at much more Major Talmadge. Okay, welcome. You're welcome. Always welcome. Now that's a Mary Talmadge's recipe. That was a recipe from my wife's cookbook. Now your wife was a Floyd? My wife was Mary Floyd, the oldest daughter of William Floyd, one of the two Long Island signers of the Declaration of you, Independence. You may, you may know that I have on social media shared a lovely portrait of her and a blue silk dress with mm -hmm. her children around. Her. Yes. A lovely portrait. The original is up in uh, Litchfield, Connecticut. I've seen the original. It was a very nice dress you bought. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh my, yes. It's all right. Put this on here. Shall we see how it is? Oh my. Very good, ma'am. Mr. Q, I think you would like this. Would you like to try? Just a bit of sweetness from some raisins, are they? Mm -hmm. Oh, gee, I wanted that. <laughs> That's very good. Everyone should try. Is this a pudding as in Captain and Commander pudding? Is this a pudding as in Captain and Commander pudding? That they would make on a ship. I think it is, isn't it? English, the English, it's just a ton of lard. They would. Lard, actually, this recipe or her recipe marries a recipe called for suet. Suet. No, lard comes from a pig, suet comes from a uh, cow. Two different properties when, yes, I do. Trust me, I know it. So the two would be, now, we don't really make suet here, so I can't go to the butcher and buy it. It would have to be a special order. I can make it, but a modern comparison to it would be Crisco. You could take Crisco, put it in the freezer, right? But you could, but it would be an equal to using suet in a historic recipe. Patrick O'Brien, who wrote Captain and Commander, and a wonderful film too. Yes, good film, but he's like 19 books that he did, yes. and they talk about um, a pudding and, and ship cooking. So I would, I would, I might guess that on. Lord Howe's ships, they, the Probably. cooks would likely be cooking things like this on Lord Howe's ships and, um, and on For the officers only. and on Captain Jones, our own Captain Jones. Mm -hmm. huh? I'm, I'm part of it. You are. You are part of our live stream today. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Q, would, can we say hello to this lovely dog? This is Brandon. Hi, Brandon. Audiences always love dogs. <laughs> Hi, baby. Oh my goodness! Well, I enjoyed speaking with you. I enjoyed. You. I enjoyed it as well. Thank you. So, what I'm going to do is just give me. Do you think Mr. Q very good, wasn't very it? Very good. Well, let's see where 
Mr. Talmadge is taking us next. Major Talmadge, are you still eating? Yeah. <laughs> do you need a... No, I'm good. That was very good, wasn't it? Ed, do you need a wipe? <laughs> I look forward to trying more of your food in the future. That's good. I can't wait. Thank you. So the tavern is a full working tavern, um, and it's from 1693, the hearth kitchen that I cook on. And excuse me, no, 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 no. I'll take. I'll serve it to you. Would you like to tell everyone the name of the tavern and where it's located if they would like to come sometime? A moment. It's the Catchem Inn located in Santa Mauritius and it dates back to 1693. Wonderful and I will see you there soon. Yep. Thank and I you wish so much. Thank, Thank you, you so me too. Much for